Okay, friends, let's take a look at the series or where it converges. All right. So first note, we're going to apply the ratio test. The limit as n goes to positive infinity. And you should do this in absolute value this way. Then you will do x minus 3 to the n plus 1. So notice I'm replacing n with n plus 1. And then you divide by x minus 3 raised to the n. And you work through this. So the limit as n goes to positive infinity. Okay, so break this up as follows within the absolute value bars. You will have x minus 3 to the n, and then here you're going to have x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 raised to the n. So continue. Notice that the x minus 3 parts can be canceled. So you'll have the limit as n goes to positive infinity, lastly, of just x minus 3. Notice that this expression x minus 3 has no limit in it. Uh, no n, rather. So... If you wanted to, you can pull it out this way, because with respect to n, it doesn't change. There's no n present in it, you see. And then what's left over, it's not obvious, but it's this, basically. So, in the end, 1 is a constant, so it's just 1 in the limit. When n goes to infinity, there is no n present here. So, you end up with x minus 3 times 1 equals, lastly, x minus 3. So, here, when we take the limit... We get this expression, absolute value of x minus 3. Okay, there's more happening behind the surface graphically, for example, but I'm not going to dwell on that here. So that's that. Now, based on this, for this to converge, we must have that x minus 3, this quantity is less than 1. So this quantity right there, the 1, that's our r, the radius of convergence. Okay, one unit. Now, we also have to check what happens at the endpoints of the interval. So let's do that. First, you got to rewrite this as negative 1 is less than x minus 3, which is less than positive 1. So you drop the absolute value bars, you put a negative 1 on the left, and you get this interval. And then you solve for x, isolate x, so negative 1 plus 3 is less than x minus 3 plus 3, which is less than 1 plus 3. So just add 3 everywhere all across. So negative 1 plus 3 is 2, less than x, less than 1 plus 3, which is 4. We should check the endpoints just to see what happens. So, when x has the value 2, the lower endpoint, let's see what we get. We're going to get the summation as n goes from 0 to positive infinity of 2 minus 3 to the n. Now, we have to be careful here. So, the limit as n goes from 0 to positive infinity of negative 1 raised to the n. So, how does this operate? Let's write out a, a few quantities to be added together. For example, when n is 0, you have negative 1 to the 0, which is 1. And when n is 1, you have negative 1 to the first, which is negative 1. When n is 2, you have negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. When n is 3, you have negative 1 cubed, which is negative 3. And then you see this pattern will continue. So you have positive, negative, positive, negative. I meant to say a 1 here. So what sense do we make of this? Well, take a look. So, look at the partial sums, okay? When x has the value 2. So, you just start adding up the numbers on the right side to form the partial sums. The first is 1. If we just take the first term, then take the next two, add them together. 1 minus 1 is 0. Then you take negative 1 with the 1 that's 0, plus the 1 is, again, 1. Then you take 1 minus 1 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, okay? So you see what's happening to these, and then dot, 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 this pattern kind of pattern continues. It diverges by oscillation, like this, okay? So in other words, the sum doesn't settle down to a value. It just goes from 1 to 0, 1 to 0, 1 to 0. It does that forever. Okay, so it's definitely divergent for that reason. Now let's see what happens when x is the value 4. You're going to have... Summation as n goes from 0 to positive infinity of 4 minus 3 raised to the n. Okay, it worked with this. Uh, summation as n goes from 0 to positive infinity of 1 to the n. But that's just 1. It doesn't matter what you have an exponent. When it's 1 in the base, it's 1. So you have the summation as n goes from 0 to of 1. And when you start adding up 1s, you'll just have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 dot 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 forever, right? So to understand this, the partial sums when x is the value 4, if you add them, well, the first one is 1, but then 1 plus 1 is 2. Add up the first 3, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. Add up the first 4, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4, and then the pattern would continue, see? So here, 
I meant to write partial, not partial. <laughs> partial sums when x equals 4 look like this. So the reason for the divergence is a bit different compared to the other one. So it diverges by uh, becoming, let's say, infinite. Whereas the other one diverges by oscillation. So you have to be, see there's a difference between the two. So if it's been helpful and insightful, friends, please be sure to leave a like. Thank you. I will see you in another video.